Okay, so now you know what identities are. You've got your head wrapped around them. We're going to look at four cubic identities today. But before I show them to you, I need you to understand two crucial questions. And there's an acronym for these two questions. I'm pointing out here because I want you to ask these two questions all the time about everything, but particularly about mathematics and particularly about these identities I'm going to show you. INIW, it stands for, sometimes, it stands for I notice, I wonder. These are the questions that all mathematicians ask whenever they're working. They, they pull around and they, they point and prod and they explore and every time they're always thinking, hmm, what do I notice here? What can I see? What can I observe? And then, hmm, I wonder what happens if, what do I try? What would be the result if I mucked around with it in this way? So, now that you've got those two ideas in your head, four identities, the first one I want us to start with is the cube of a sum. Now, four words, two of them are just conjunctions, we don't need to worry about them. A cube is when you raise something to the power of three. And a sum is just when you're adding two things together. Okay? So, if I take an arbitrary sum, and by arbitrary I mean those a's and b's, they could be anything, and I cube it. I'm going to give you a one minute head start. Can you go ahead and you can expand that for me? This thing is factorized, right? We've been looking at factorizing and expanding so far. Can you go ahead and expand out? It might take you two or three or four lines and tell me what you get. Go ahead. I'll give you some time to make a jump on it. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Hands down. Now, it's okay if you didn't write it exactly like that. Maybe your order is slightly different. You should have those terms though, okay? Now, there's a good reason why I've written it in this order and I'm glad lots of people are consistent. I'm going to ask you these questions. What do you notice about this line? Anything, just like one little idea. Yeah. You can group them in, say that again, a bit louder. Yeah, okay, so when you have a look at these four, right, this looks like one of the kinds of questions you've done in the past few exercises. It's almost like begging to be factorized, because you can see how things are paired up, and that shouldn't be surprising, because it came from something that was super factorized, okay? Very good, what else do you notice? Yeah. Okay, so when you have a, when you pay attention to the powers, um, let's have a look, there's two sets of powers, aren't there, right? You've got the A powers, and then you've got the B powers. And I think you were talking about the A's, weren't you? So the way that most of us has written it is with descending powers of A. So in fact, there's an A to the 1 here. And in fact, there's also an A here, isn't it? How many A's do I have? On this last term, I have 0, so it's A to the north, okay? And you've got the same thing happening in reverse. Cool. What else do you notice? Someone else didn't say anything yet. I noticed more things, yeah. Um, so like the, the coefficient for each polynomial goes 1, 3, 3, 1. So we don't usually write when a coefficient is 1. However, it is helpful in this case to do it because noticing the numbers is, for starters, it's symmetrical. It's very nice and, in fact, some of you have seen this result before and you may have just gone straight to that line. It is quite easy to remember once you know to expect that there's going to be this symmetrical pattern. So there's a symmetrical pattern of coefficients. Also, those coefficients aren't just symmetrical. Those are special numbers. Where have we seen 1, 3, 3, and 1 before? Where have we seen it? Oh, oh I forgot the name. I'm pretty sure we've seen it. It's like that. Here, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. Haven't we? What's this thing called again? Pascal. Pascal's triangle. Okay. Though actually, because it's such an important mathematical object, it's been discovered and rediscovered over and over again throughout history. Don't know how Pascal got his name on it. Good luck. This, 1331, can you see? It's the next line of Pascal's triangle, isn't it? Okay. Do you notice anything else? Have we exhausted all of the properties and characteristics of this thing? I don't think we have, but I'm pretty satisfied at the moment. I think we've got most of the important things because this final line, I'm going to expect you to remember it, okay? Now, yeah, maybe this is the first time you've looked at it and you think, my goodness, how many symbols are there? But I promise you, those things that we just noticed are very, they give a sort of nice rhythm to this, this object. It's actually quite easy to remember when you think about all these objects. I wonder something, which is, I said that this is the next line of Pascal's triangle. 
right? What I wonder is, why on earth does this have anything to do with Pascal's triangle? Like, really, why? And secondly, what if I changed some numbers? Like, say, that one, right? What would happen? And why would it happen? Next topic, we'll have a look at that. I just want to lay that to you down. Cube of a sum. Cube of a sum. I'll get used to that. If you don't like that, get used to it. Um, cube of a sum. The next thing we're going to have a look at is the cube of a difference, which is when you don't add, when you subtract. Okay. Now, a cube of a difference is instead of a plus b, if I have a minus b, that's the difference and that's the cube. Okay. Now, what I could do is I could ask you to rehearse this process all over again. I could say, can you expand it out just like we did before and then see what you end up with at the end. However, mathematicians, famously lazy, always searching for ways to minimize the amount of work they've done. One of the main ways that we do that is we look at work that we've already done and we say, hey, can I take advantage of this when I solve a new problem? Okay. Now this is a cube of a difference, but I can actually write this difference as a sum. And the way we can do it is with this lonely button that you never use. How can I write this difference as a sum instead of a difference? Hmm. Yeah, suggestion. Oh, wait, that would just make it a difference again, but the other way around. Hmm. You think you're like reversing or something like that? Yeah, or? I think just take a factor of minus one. Okay, so let me give you a clue. Uh, maybe you're not that far from this, right? If I want this to be a sum, then the operation has to be addition, right? But adding something, which is the same as subtracting, is really why you've never used this button before. Right? Because adding a negative is, after all, the same as just subtracting. Right? So, do you see what I've done? I've turned a difference into a sum, which means I can just go straight to this line. It's just that instead of writing B every time I've written B here, what am I going to write instead? Uh, careful, what am I going to write instead? I'm going to write negative B. Okay? So let's just go straight to the punchline. Right? I'm going to rewrite it. But every time I see b down here, I will replace it with negative b. Okay. So the first term is a cubed, doesn't change. The next term is going to be 3a squared negative times negative b. Right? I know, it's such, a, it's such a reflex to say minus b, but actually these things are different. Uh, the next thing is 3a negative b. and negative b gets squared. And then lastly, negative b is going to get cubed. Are you okay with that? Yeah. So now, having done a straight substitution, I can simplify by sorting out all these negative signs. Okay. So what happens to this one? Yeah, I can reverse my trick. Right. I don't need to write it as the sum of a negative thing. I can go back to saying, well, this is a subtraction now. Okay. So that's three a squared b. What about this one? Double negative, so they're going to cancel each other out. And then in the end. There are three negative signs hiding in there. Two of them will cancel each other out, leaving you with one. And I'm going to convert that into a subtraction. Are you happy? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's the cube of the difference. Again, I'm going to ask you to remember it, mainly by using it. Lots of things are the same. What, what things are the same? Okay, so yeah, the increasing, de decreasing thing, right? I can write it in exactly the same way here. What else is the same? Yeah, the coefficients, their values are the same. It's still the 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay, what's the only thing that has changed? The operation. Yeah, the operations are going to, they're alternating here, right? So you add, subtract, add, subtract, that's it. 